fail safe. I agree. I go fail safe, fail closed because it's going to the outside air. Uh, again, what about this one right in front of the coil? Same scenario. It's going to the outside air, air and you're right at the coil. So you're going to want to fail that close so you don't freeze the coil. What about this one in the return here? You're going to fail it or just? Not fail. That, that's the one that I get the, the most discussion on because yeah, some people say non-fail on that one. It's not to the outside air. I would fail it, and yes, I would fail it open, possibly with a switch. Well, with a switch, no, that's not taking the failure into consideration. But I would fail this open if I'm failing these closed, so you can maintain the circulation going around. So here we have a pneumatic actuator. It's inherently spring return. If you're replacing a pneumatic actuator out in the field, are you going to use a spring return model or a non-spring? Going back to the question on the first slide, what does the application demand? Just because you have a pneumatic in it, obviously a spring return, if you're controlling a VAV box, you don't need a spring return actuator to put into the VAV box. You can go down to a non-spring, non-springs are course less expensive. Um, so you really have to look at what the application demands. It's not in that section. <laughs> it's, it's, after the, it's after the wiring section. Yeah. So air damper actuator sizing. Do you have to do any kind of sizing to size what actuator is like? Well, we do have a tool uh, that you can download, a software tool you can download from our website. I'll just show it to you real quick. I'm not going to use it right now, but uh, it's called Select Pro. We do have the capability of sizing up damper actuators, valves, uh, retrofit kits for valves, uh, piping packages, and also we have an energy modeling software in there. So in this section we're going to cover how to calculate the total torque required, select a suitable actuator for the damper. So torque, as most of you probably know, just a, a rotational force, you know, kind of like turning the lug nut on the wheel of your car. Um, and then this is just defining you know, how much torque is required. So you can see down here, if you have a, a one inch uh, radius, then that means it would take one pound of torque. Half inch requires two, two pounds. So the torque formula is your damper area in square feet multiplied by your rate of torque loading of your damper. That gives you your torque in inch pounds required to move the damper. So obviously your information you needed, you're going to need the damper area, and then you're going to need your damper torque rating, which good luck finding that. Uh, the damper manufacturers all know internally what they require, <coughs> but rarely do they share that information. So, um, so we have some tips and tricks to help you out with that. So I don't know if this is still page 15-2, but it is near the back. And this is just a step-by-step, step-by-step step by step instruction guide for sizing up dampers. Is it 
part of the oh yeah, it's part of the notes. So you can look at it from the notes page uh, from the workbook. So the first step we look at is what's the total area of the damper in square feet. So if you get a nice easy one that's 36 by 48, that's three foot by four foot, you just multiply three by four, get your 12 square feet. If it weren't quite so easy, you can multiply the inches, divide by 144, that would tell you how many square feet. So for our example that we go through here, we're going to use the 12 square feet. You have opposed or parallel blade dampers. Torque load rating is directly linked to whether you have opposed or parallel blade. You can see here, a parallel blade with edge seals is going to be 7 inch pounds per square foot. Whereas if you had an opposed without seals, it's only 3 inch pounds per square foot. Personally, I would recommend, especially if you have an older damper, you know, you're not really sure, go with the seven. You're going to be safe there. You know, you're going to get a little more torque just in case things are a little rusty and don't move quite as well as they did when they were brand new. For our example, we're going to say it's an opposed plane damper. As we saw in the previous page, the opposed blade dampers require less torque uh, to close off. That's because of their design. Parallel blades require more torque. Seals, of course, are going to add resistance, increasing the torque requirement. Uh, a lot of times you may hear the opposed blade damper referred to as a control damper. You can see here. A little bit of opening is only going to give you a little bit of airflow, whereas on the parallel blade, a little bit of opening can still give you quite a bit of airflow. So these, the opposed blades are going to be used more in modulating applications, whereas the parallel blades are going to be used more in two position applications. So we said we're going to use an opposed blade damper for our example. And we're going to use, uh, for the example, say that the damper has edge seals. Next question. What does the manufacturer specify as the torque rating? Like I said, good luck with that. Um, I've been in sales in this industry for 13 years now. And I have not seen one damper that has torque load rating on any labels or stickers anywhere. So, you know, maybe some have had them when they were brand new and they've just worn off, but I'm never going out looking at brand new dampers. I'm going out helping people replace actuators. And none of the ones that have been out in the field have had any of that information. So, you know, if it's not available, you know, we're referring to the sizing chart here. If, it, if that information is available, take whatever they give you and multiply it by 1.2 and use that. We always add a, a fudge factor in there because the, their testing that they've done is in a factory installed in perfect condition with a brand new damper. So if you, you, you take it out into the field, it's going to get dirty. It's going to it may not get installed. It might be racked a little bit when it gets installed. So we always add a little bit more torque to make sure that we're going to cover what they recommend. All right. Yeah, you know, in the factory, they're perfectly square. Everything's just right. And just in shipping them, you know, they're, they're not going to arrive in exactly the same condition as they were in the factory. Then we're going to look at the uh, velocity or static pressure of design CFM. <coughs> Typical for an HVAC system is less than 1,000 feet per minute. If we don't know that it's anything more than that, that's typically what we're going to use is 1,000 feet. So in looking at uh, our example here, we've got the damper area of 12 square feet, the rated torque loading of five, comes from this chart down here. We said we were gonna use an opposed blade with edge seals. We said it was less than, uh,